Hey everyone, it's Andrew with the Alien Hunter here. Welcome to the channel. I've been closely following the story of retired Air Force weather observer Dr. Charles Hall for probably over five years now. I read his first book, Millennial Hospitality, and as a believer in ET, I was definitely thrilled by the story. And if you haven't read it, you should definitely uh, go give it a look. He wrote an entire series of books on his personal experiences um, in the Air Force in uh, the late mid to late 60s. Um, Dr. Hall is now a nuclear physicist and is recounting his remarkable story to the public through the series and every so often he speaks live at a conference or a book signing. Um, so it goes like this, in 1964 he enlists in the Air Force and he arrives at what was the former Nellis Air Force Base uh, which is now called Creech Air Force Base in Indian Springs, Nevada. So he's there from 1965 to 1967. So for two years, um, he was out in the desert at range four, which if you're looking at this map here, you can see the different places where he's plotted out um, his experiences with the tall whites. Um, he claims he made contact with an ancient civilization of alien beings that we now call the tall whites. Um, so Charles became somewhat of an ambassador to these beings and he shared a number of extraordinary experiences with them in the desert. Um, apparently these ET have been coming to our planet for over 3,000 years and sometime around the 50s made an agreement with our military to utilize land in the desert of Nevada um, for their base in exchange for technology given to our government. Um, he says they reach nearly eight feet tall, which I'm assuming is why they, you know, appropriately got the name T the Tall Whites, and they live to about 700 to 800 years old. Um, their planet is much warmer than ours, and with their craft, they obviously travel at the speed of light or faster um, to reach our planet. Um, so he he explains a number of and recounts a number of amazing experiences out there. You know, obviously, that he was terrified. He had no idea why um, they were making their presence known to him, and all of these crazy things that happened to him in just the short span of two years. He goes on to explain that he was in in a long line list of weather observers who had quit or left their job responsibilities because they came into contact with one of the ET, I guess they, they called Range 4 Harry, um, and most of them would quit, you know, run away, be terrified, and couldn't perform their duties, and it took until Charles came along in 65 to keep a weather observer at his location, Range 4. And so if you're looking at the map where he shows um, each individual location, um, where he had in interactions and encounters with the beings you can see range four and all the way through the valley there in Indian Springs just off of the base um, for several miles there were different points and you know bases and and almost like recreation areas for these people and a parking area for the scout craft which was a smaller aircraft I guess for navigating around once they traveled here in the larger craft um, which was their deep space craft so he explains that their suits allowed them to levitate and put off a glowing white luminescent light and that their electronics allowed them to communicate with him by placing thoughts in his mind um and you know which you can almost imagine you know it's like we have people that are experiment and explore telepathic abilities you know the government in the Cold War employed people to um, you know telepathically uh, try to determine what the enemy was was doing where certain locations of potential missiles and any threat to America might be located so we understand that there are these capabilities but Charles explained that these beings the tall whites had that capability but it was amplified by an electronic system in their suit and so he said they would, they would look at his temple um, specifically and put place thoughts in his mind and even though they had learned English they're a very um, advanced um, much more intelligent civilization obviously technologically beyond us um, clearly they are uh, advanced beyond um, 
our evolution at this point, and that's why they're here. And he, he did say that they would look at his temple, that they would place thoughts into his mind, and that's how they, he would communicate with them, that they were you know, terrified really of humans and that their bones were brittle, um, that they came obviously from another planet that was much warmer than ours and they had to go back there if they got hurt in, in other places um, in the galaxy to heal properly, um, which is also interesting. But, you know, he, he explained the gravity force field of the earth, you know, that we have gravity waves. And so when they come in, um, their ships are unstable because our gravity flows in waves across the earth and so almost like the ocean it's, our gravity waves resonate and Vibrate I guess you should say and so as they come in, you know Their craft are unstable because those waves are flowing and they're trying to stabilize their craft And apparently that is also why they explained to him that they would come in and out of our atmosphere um, on a full moon so anytime now I see uh, or hear a full moon is coming that night, I always kind of keep an eye up uh, at the stars to see if I'm catching a glimpse, you know. The truth is always stranger than fiction and obviously, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, credible people in this field of research of ET and UFOs that talk about disclosure making its way out through not only the media, but also Hollywood. And so it's funny that Charles's explanation, um, you know, kind of reminds me of that for how they would hypnotize him with a technology you know, similar to what we see in Men in Black. He, sit, he made reference to a pin that puts people to sleep. So I guess sort of a pin that they would point at him, a white pin device. And there are other people that have claimed this similar thing um, one other guy that I saw online, and I'll, if I find the link, I'll try to put it up for you guys. But that they would point this white pin at him and that it would sort of put him in a hypnotized state and he would wake up several hours later um, and realize that he was missing all of this time. Didn't know where he was, never hurt or anything like that, but he later said that that was so that they could feel safe with their children around him or to let their children sort of play um, near humans, and, but he also talked about their propulsion system, and, and I'm always particularly interested in you know anti gravity technology because I think that's really at the center of this whole discussion and, and why it's being kept under wraps. Because if these technologies are here and have been here for thousands of years, you know why don't we use them to better this planet and our evolution as a race? But going back to what he said, there is a thousand miles of fiber optic cables apparently um, that generate subatomic particles um, in their ships and that's what they use um, to create these force fields and so he explains that there are technically more force fields in this science than Einstein had discovered and he said their crafts lifted off the desert floor in complete silence reaching speeds he calculated at over 8,000 miles per hour. He said that it was so fast that if you blinked your eyes, you'd miss it. And this, if we understand it, creates 15 times the force of gravity. So there's no way a human, you know, with our natural laws of nature um, could survive these speeds, you know, without some sort of a field around the craft that obviously keeps the passengers safe inside. This story, the Indian Springs story, Charles Hall's story about the tall whites so fascinated us that we went out to Area 51 and then of course over to Indian Springs where Dr. Hall had these experiences and I can say from personal experience it's a very peculiar and creepy town and my wife would account to this as well. Um, you know, just past the Air Force Base entrance, it's a very Area 51 type base, you know, and there's there's Department of Energy signs, and this is where they tested uh, the nuclear bombs. Um, all of that crazy technology is, is happening right out here in these, you know, probably 20 to 50 square miles in the Nevada desert. And you feel it, you feel the weight of the town when you drive. I mean, Indian Springs is a small, little town with this um, what is now Creech Air Force Base and you feel it when you drive up and we asked we went into the gas station and asked the lady if you know if she'd seen anything strange and she was like you know this isn't Area 51 which is technically true but um, it is you know Creech and it, and it was Nellis where uh, Dr. Hall had these experiences with the tall whites and so that was that was cool and we experienced it for ourselves. and it's it's got a creepy 
um, just sterile, almost hollow feeling to it. It's something in the air there. And, uh, you know, and, and so it brought um, at least some, some dimension to the story for us being able to picture Indian Springs now in our mind, you know, when doing research on this. Um, but I was looking through these pictures of our trip out there to Indian Springs. And as I was doing that, I was like, man, I want to get on Google Earth, Google Maps and take a look through the base and the desert there looking at this picture that Charles shows us um, I wanted to see for myself what the landscape looks like and see this um, you know these dry lake beds and kind of just peruse around Google Earth and so I pulled it up and I'll put the link here in the video for you guys to check it out as well but as you can see here um, I've pulled it up and this is Indian Springs and you know right here is the base it's a little town you know you're right here in the Sierra Nevada mountains and this um, area here are the dry lake beds and going straight out um, from behind you know the base is where range four was as you saw in the pictures um and where dr hall worked and so i immediately was just kind of searching around i wanted to see you know this area what did it look like up close i love the satellite imagery that we're able to investigate this for ourselves and right here i noticed what looked like some landing strips or some signals for air traffic control of some sort and I zoomed in and as you can see we have some sort of a jet um, emblem here on the sand and they've drawn these circles and then I don't know if these are some kind of almost like entrances they look like and here is another one on the left which also if you can see looks like it was moved recently uh, I'm not sure what these are if they're runways if they're if they're what but I knew it was fascinating I mean it's right near uh, where apparently they used to park their scout craft. And so as I continued to search the area, um, I found some more interesting things. Um, and I wanted to show you guys what we found. So this is range four. We're going up a little bit more to where they used to play and where he had some interactions, seeing them run and all this crazy stuff. But as I was going up here where he says they're their deep craft were parked i started to look around a little bit closer and notice some you know abnormal things right here at the base of this mountain and they you know his story he claims that um if you've read any interviews or, or watched any of his his um live speaking engagements he claims that there were holes cut in the base of these mountains and that they would park their craft inside of these bases and i noticed as i got close this looks like the entrance or something that could open up you know this this is a different color from the sand it's very obviously um you know not in place and then as i'm doing the you know, as I'm digging around, I noticed this incredibly luminescent glowing orb off to the left. I don't know, it's probably not even two tenths of a mile away, and it looks like almost like a being. I mean, you can look at it for yourself. I'm putting the link below. As you zoom out, you can you can see it even from a distance, but it's right where he said he had these interactions with them. He said they that they were luminescent with their suits on. And as you get even this close, you can see a very luminescent, glowing, what looks like some sort of anomaly in this photo, in this, in this um, satellite imagery. And as you look around, you don't see it anywhere else. So my question is, what are these things? And are these an entrance to their base? Does this prove it? And what is this? What is this luminescent glowing object out in the middle of this desert where you see nothing else of that nature next to um, these anomalies, these what look like openings for potentially a base or uh, for them to park their craft. So I was fascinated by that. I wanted to show you guys, I'll put the link down there and you can check it out for yourself um, and do all the exploring you want of this story as well so leave a comment tell me what you guys think make sure and subscribe to the channel there's going to be a ton more great content like this coming your way uh, just sharing information and starting a dialogue here with you guys about these phenomenon and getting your input 
as well. Um, this is a story I've been fascinated with for a, for a very long time, and I'd love to just know what you think about it. I mean, the imagery, the satellite imagery definitely was creepy. I've been to Indian Springs, I've driven up and down that road, I've seen the Department of Energy, you know, Mercury Road entrances, and it's, it's very Area 51, which obviously it's close to that. Uh, anyway in proximity to or adjacent to it it's it's creepy but this guy's story to me is different than something you could just dismiss and so i i would encourage you to read the books check it out for yourself and let me know what you think um many more videos coming your way very soon so make sure to subscribe and remember to keep looking up and keep looking out thanks guys yeah.